Hello there all my lovely jewelry makers, I'm Christina of CSL Designs and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make this Kisses wire crochet bracelet. Now you can achieve many different looks depending on the beads that you add or if you want to add any beads at all, but these will also be available for sale in my shop so I'm going to leave a link to that in the description box down below, otherwise if you want to learn how you can make your own then keep watching. So these are the materials that we'll need. Now the wire that I'm using here is a regular round silver coated copper wire and this is a 0.4 mil gauge. Now the beads that I'm going to be adding in are these three millimeter bicones. The specific ones I'm using are Crystal A bead by Preciosa. So they're going to add a beautiful sparkle but you can of course play around with what beads you want to add to yours or you can even leave out the beads completely. Now to finish off the ends I'm going to be using these ribbon ends that have loops in them where we can then attach our findings. And in my case I'm using a loft or claw clasp and extended chain and a couple of jump rings. But you can of course choose what whatever kind of class you prefer or even make your own. And to help secure the ribbon ends in place I'm going to also be using my E6000 glue. It's going to make it really strong and durable. For the tools I'm going to be using my flush cutters here so we can cut our wire, tweezer nose and chain nose pliers to help manipulate any wire and also open and close jump rings. And probably the most important tool is of course the crochet hook. So the one I'm using is a 1.25 millimeter but it doesn't have to be that specific size just make sure it's a small hook. Now you can find the full material list and useful links in the description box down below otherwise let's get it all ready and let's get started. As for the wire we need, I'm not going to be cutting off any length to work with. I'm going to work with it still attached to the reel because it's hard to know exactly how much we need plus that way we also have minimum wastage. Now I'm going to start towards one end of the wire here and just leave a short little tail and I've got my crochet hook ready. So I'm going to just put the wire over my finger and we need to make the initial loop first of all. So I'm putting my crochet hook in between my finger and the wire. So underneath the wire there and I just want to then rotate it in one full rotation and then basically that has now created our very first loop so from there we now need to start making a row of loops which will be one side of the bracelet so to begin with it can be a little bit fiddly because obviously there's not a whole lot to hold on to we'll just make a couple of loops and then it'll be much easier so just hold on to that little tail for now now what i'm going to do is obviously have the crochet hook through the loop i'm then going to hook onto the wire behind the loop which is the long end that's attached to the reel and then pull it back through the loop and then at the front here i'm going to then pull push it towards the shaft part, so the wider part, but just before the handle, and then pull it out a little bit from there. Then I rotate the crochet hook, so the hook part is going to face away from me, and then push it backwards. So we end up laying this new loop that we made flat next to the other one. That is how we're making our row. So that's my second loop to make the next one. Again, crochet hook through that loop, grab onto the wire, pull it through to the front, and then at the front here, push the crochet hook through to the widest part just before the handle and then pull it out a little bit. The hook part, rotate it away from yourself and then flatten it down. So we're creating loops like this in a row right next to each other. So this is my third one. And you just wanna continue like this for now, creating one long row until we have the amount that we're gonna need for the length of bracelet that we want to make. So I now made the full length here for one side and I have my row of loops. And what I've done is I've ended up with 49 loops in total. So of course you can make it longer or shorter, that's up to you. What I'd recommend if you do that is you make it longer by sections of four loops or shorter by sections of four because that way we have the whole X's all the way along in the middle the final pattern we're going to end up with so obviously that's up to you and what you need but then from here I'm going to continue with the framework so this is one side like I said I'm going to then make my next loop same way pull it out and now instead of continuing upwards I'm going to bring it to the side and you can change direction of how you hold it because now I want to make a row kind of from this corner part and this is going to be the end of the bracelet. So that's technically now two loops on this side. Make the third one. We're doing them in the exact same way. We just changed direction and kind of added in a corner. Number four number five and the final one is number six so don't worry if it looks a little bit weird you can always adjust it so just push the corner a little bit tighter if you need to so this is one end of the bracelet now and we then need to change direction again because we then need to go and make the other side and the other end as well so from this loop here i'm going to pull the wire through create a new loop and this time again i'm going to bring out to the side and just change the way i'm holding my piece and the direction that i'm now going to make the row in and from here we literally want to continue creating a long row again and we need to make now the same amount as we did in the very first one in my case that's 49 if they end up not being quite the same length that's not so important the most important thing is to have the same amount of loops so now i got the 49 loops on this side as well then we need to do the last side which is the other end and again 
create a new loop and this time take it to the side and then just change how you're holding your piece then that's two loops on this side here and we need six in total just like we have on the other end and then what we need to do is actually connect the piece so we have one full frame so obviously that's connecting it back to the very beginning loop so we just want to make sure that everything is straightened out go all the way around making sure we connect it properly so i've got hold of my piece and now i'm putting my crochet hook through the very last loop that we just made and then i'm going to take the loop and go through the very first loop that we made originally and then we have the hook going through two loops at the same time and then now what we're going to do to connect the full frame is literally just pull the wire through in the same way and then just to have a look you can see we now have our full frame and like i said before if the two sides aren't exactly the same length that's fine it's more important to get the same amount of loops because we're going to go over this again and we can always adjust it more so from here we're going to go straight on and start making the x's in the middle so again grab the crochet hook and just go through that very final loop that we pull through and again i'm going to change how i'm holding it i'm now starting down here on this end where i am and i'm going to start flattening this loop here basically inside of the frame so just on the inside of this corner where we're at and what we're going to need to do is six loops in total here so i just made the first one then then within the frame I'm going to make a row of loops again here that's the second one the third the fourth the fifth and the sixth so I now have six loops inside the frame and they're kind of coming from that corner at an angle so what we need to do now is connect this last loop we just made to the other side of the frame up here so I need to count my loops to know exactly where to connect it so that means from the other corner on this end I'm going to count one two three four five and on that fifth loop there I'm just gonna go through the last loop we made on this section on the inside and then also go through that fifth loop in the frame so again I'm going through two loops and that's how we connect them then make a new loop to connect them together and don't worry about things going a little bit out of shape because we can always reshape it as we're going and we will be going over everything again as well now I'm going to rotate my piece so I'm going to go inside of the frame again but now we're going to be going in a zigzag pattern so I'm going to go from this connection point up to towards the other end but over towards the opposite side now so this new loop I'm going to also flatten towards the inside of the frame and then we need to do the same principle make another row of loops here and it's going to be the same amount as the first row so you can see we're already getting that impression of the zigzag so basically what we're doing is ending up with five loops inside of the frame crossing over and the sixth loop is the one we use to attach to the frame now the connection point on this side we're also going to count so we get the right amount of loops so from the corner that we originally started from here skipping that very first one I'm then going to count one two three four five six seven eight so the eighth loop minus the very corner one and then go through the newest loop that we made and then through that eighth one in the frame and then you can see it's going to line up nicely with that zigzag pattern that we're creating and then we basically want to keep going like this from side to side until we make our way all the way down to the other end so again I'm going to pull a loop through to just fasten that connection point and then rotate the piece a bit this new loop I'm gonna again bring on the inside of the frame starting the next zigzag row and moving towards the opposite side again so that's one loop and six and that sixth one on the opposite side here we also need to count so in this case I'm counting from that last connection point we had on that side and not including that connection point we start after it we're gonna count one two three four five six seven eight grab onto the the newest loop and then go through that eighth loop and that's going to be the newest connection point you can always double check and see if it lines up nicely and obviously double check counting if you need to but then fastening that connection point pull a loop through and this is where we then rotate again around so we can continue the zigzag and work towards the opposite side again and you just want to keep going like this now making another row of six loops here and then connect the sixth one to the opposite side and zigzag all the way until we reach the other end so now I made it all the way to the other end here and then the last section of loops that I've done is again the same amount so six and then the very last space we've got left is just enough of that sixth one to then join up with the corner on this end now what we need to do is the other half so we can get the excess so to do that I'm going to again bring out a loop and now I'm going to work my way across the end here to the other corner so just follow the loops we already have in place 
and making your way to the very last one there. So right at the corner and then pull out another loop. What we're gonna do is work our way all the way back down. So basically do the same thing, but now they're gonna be opposite, which is then gonna form the X's. Now it is gonna be a little bit different because we already have the first zigzag, you could say, going down. So we also need to connect the one we're gonna do now with that existing one. So first of all, this loop here, I'm going to bring inwards just like when we started out the other one and then i'm going to start the next section here so that's one loop two loops we're again going to need six in total to reach to the other side but along the way i'm going to do the third one here and this is one we then need to connect to the section that we're going to be crossing over so i need to connect to the middle one so i end up having two free loops on either side of it so we now have two loops we come through bring the wire through to create a new loop and continue on the other side of that so bring the loop down down, and then we can see we now have that connection point between those two sections so after that connection point I'm making one loop two and then we need to make one more so the third one after the connection point which now also makes six in total so if we count from the bottom not including the very corner one but the first one after that one two three four five six which is the same amount that we were doing as we are making the first zigzag. And this sixth one, we need to connect to the outer frame on the opposite side here. So what we just need to do is connect it in the very middle. So we can just count from this corner. What we have in total in this section in between one point to another is one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven loops. So the middle one of those will be the fourth one. So that's one, two, three, four. So I grab the sixth loop that I just made and go through that fourth one. So we make sure we have three free ones on either side of that. So it's right in the middle in between these other two points. Obviously in this case is the corner, but then that other point from the previous zigzag section that we made. And this is gonna be the connection point in the outer frame. And this is the point where I'm gonna turn a piece around and start working in the opposite direction towards the opposite side again. Bring that loop inwards. And then you can see as well, we have the very first X down there. And that's basically how we're gonna continue. So this is the first loop. Loop, and then we need to make the second one and the third one which is also going to connect to the section that's already crossing over there so make sure to go through the middle one which is the third one from either side go through so your crochet hook is going through both of those loops and connect them together by making another loop and just finish off this section by making another three loops so one two and the third one which is the sixth one and this sixth one we need to connect to the outer frame again so count from either side again we're just constantly focusing on the these points because we're working with the section in between them so one two three four is the middle loop we need to go through both loops there and then make a new one to connect them and then start this loop on the inside going in the opposite direction moving towards the opposite side so you can see we're now creating these X's now you might find that this looks a little bit wonky as you're making it don't worry too much about that the main thing is to get it all in the correct places and connected in the right loops because we can still manipulate this and we are going to go over again and create more strength in it so just keep going like this six second from side to side opposite to the one you already did all the way down to the other end, reaching that final corner down here. And now I've made it all the way to the other end, right in that corner there, you can see we have the axis running all the way along. And like I said, don't worry if it looks a bit messy, like this one here as well, it's not completely straight or anything. Because what we're gonna do now is from this corner, we're literally gonna go around the outside frame all the way along again. So just make a new loop and just continue in this natural direction, go through the next loop in the frame. So to begin with, we're just working our way across to the other corner. And then from that corner, just grab another loop there and then just work your way along this outer edge and don't worry about the excess here just work your way along the outer edge and we're basically adding a whole another layer of loops which will strengthen it and also then help straighten it out and make it look more neat and even so you just want to keep doing this all the way along work your way to the other end of course go over that end as well and up the other side so the whole out of frame has got an extra layer on it. And now going all the way around, you can see adding that extra layer to the frame is making it much more neat looking and also durable as well. So we're basically done with the wire crochet now. What you can do though, is if you want to, you can always add an extra layer if you want to make it more solid, or you could even also add another layer on top of the excess. That's completely up to you and personal preference. But what we then need to do is cut off the length of wire. So I'm cutting off about 60 centimeters or so. But then once I've cut it off, I just want to pull the wire through, kind of making one 
one last loop, but instead of actually using it as a loop, I'm just gonna keep pulling the wire through. And then we just wanna get into position so we can start adding our beads. So I'm just using the same wire here. Now you can also add in a new wire, it's completely up to you. But then I just wanna make my way towards the other side over here. So I just basically wanna go up and down through the loops that also now fastens in that very last loop that we made. And we're just gonna make our way over to the other side, almost like we're stitching in and out of each loop. Then I just want to decide where I want the beads to start. Now I don't wanna start all the way at the bottom corner there because we're gonna add the ribbon ends which are gonna overlap down here a little bit. So we don't want a bead ending up at the inside because then we can't clamp it down. But obviously if you're making your own clasp and attaching it, you can always start right at the end if you want to. But I'm just gonna work my way in. So I'm gonna start adding my beads from the third loop from the end. So I've now got my wire coming out of the second loop there from the back towards the front here. And then we just want to get our beads ready. So I'm just gonna pour a few out and have them handy for when I need them. And then to add in the beads, I'm just going to take one bead here, add it onto the length of wire that's already in position, let the bead drop down. And then, like I said, I want this bead to sit on top of the third loop. So I'm gonna jump over that loop with the wire and go down through the fourth loop. So the one after I want the bead to sit on. And as I'm pulling this down, the bead is gonna then end up sitting on top of that third loop and sideways as well. So the side of the bead is gonna be facing outward and really catching nicely on the light there. And then I'm gonna bring my wire up the same loop that we're making sure I'm going in between the wires within, because obviously otherwise it'll just pull straight back out. But that's the nice thing about the wire crochet as well. You can add a wire like this and going around and it's gonna be seamless because it's just gonna blend in with the rest of the wires. Now I then wanna add another bead to the next loop. So what I'm doing is basically adding a bead into every other loop. So I'm just gonna grab another bead, add it to my wire, let it drop down and then same principle I'm going to skip over the loop where I want the bead to sit and then go down through the next one making sure I go in between the wires as I pull it tight and make sure that, that bead sits sideways on top of that loop and come up through the same loop but going in between the wires like I said so it doesn't pull straight back out and then the wire is in position to add the next bead and let it drop down and the same principle jump over the loop where we want the bead to sit and then just keep going like this. Now I'm gonna go all the way up this side here, adding beads along the way. And once I get to the end here, I'm just gonna make my way to the other side without adding beads in, because again, that's where the ribbon end is gonna sit. But then otherwise come up the other side as well and add in your beads there as well. So now I added the beads all the way around here. Then we're left with these two tails and we just need to finish them off. So what you're gonna do is just where the wire is coming out from on the back of the piece, I just wanna find a place where I can basically wrap it around another wire. Just go through it like that and then pull it all the way through and then pull that tight so it wraps around nicely. And if you can, go through it again and also pull that tight. So now we made sure that the wire is wrapping around a different wire which is now secured it in place. So once that's done, you can go in and cut off the excess right where that final wrap is. And then if you put your finger over it, you can feel that little end of the wire sticking out. So just to get rid of that, make sure to push that in. And you just wanna do the same with the other length as well. And once we got rid of the excess wires, we need to finish off the very ends here. So we can of course attach our findings. So I'm gonna be attaching these ribbon ends onto the end of the bracelet. And to help do that, I'm gonna also be using my glue. So I'm going to just take a bit of glue onto a toothpick and then grabbing the ribbon end, I'm gonna add glue inside of it and make sure to cover the walls. Now you don't have to fill it up because it's just gonna come spilling out when we clamp it down. And then what I like to do with anything I have left on my toothpick is just add it to the actual end of the bracelet as well. And really make sure the glue gets in between the wires and all the nooks and crannies because that way when we put the two pieces together and it dries, they're gonna really adhere nicely. Then add the ribbon end and then we just need to clamp it down. So I like to put it in my hand like this, hold it, and then put a finger on either side of it so it stays in place. And then I start to clamp it down. Now I like to do it gradually. So I don't just go into one place and do a big squeeze. I like to gradually go from side to side because it can slip around while you're doing this. So once I get close to having it all the way down, I just remove my fingers, make sure it's still in the middle. If not, you can always just do a final adjustment and then go in and do your final squeeze, make it really nice and tight. And I also like to just go in from the sides and close those up nicely. And that is now attached. Now, of course, we need to leave the glue to dry, but then 
we had that loop on the end there, we can attach our actual findings. So of course, repeat the same thing on the other end, attach your findings, and then you pretty much have your finished bracelet. And then finally, we can just gently shape it here. Now, because this is a pretty soft bracelet, you can kind of just shape it around. And obviously, just using the clasp there, and then just kind of get it a bit into a better position so that when you have it on your wrist, it sits nicely. So something a bit like that, and then, you have your finished bracelet completely done and ready to wear. So that's how you make this Kisses wire crochet bracelet. Now, if you want to check out more wire crochet designs, I have a whole playlist full of them. I'll leave that in the description box down below. Otherwise, I really hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for watching it, and I'll see you in the next one.